When you think of American trucking, you think of engines built to last forever, iron blocks, raw power, and the kind of reliability that made drivers swear by them. But not every engine was built to survive the test of time. Some were too dirty, too powerful, or just too flawed to stay on the road. And when the government, the EPA, and the big manufacturers stepped in, these power plants didn't just fade away. They were banned, discontinued, or flat out erased from the highways. These are the engines truckers still talk about. Some with pride, some with anger, and some with nostalgia. They represent an era when trucking was louder, dirtier, and in many ways tougher than it is today. In this video, we're breaking down six American truck engines that were banned worldwide. From Detroit's screaming two-strokes to Caterpillar's last stand, these machines were too raw, too unreliable, or too non-compliant for today's roads. Stick around, because by the end, you'll see why some of the most iconic engines in history were forced off the map. And you might just wish you could still drive one. Detroit Diesel Series 71 and 92. When you talk about legendary old school truck engines, the Detroit Diesel two-strokes always come up, especially the Series 71 and 92. These things were everywhere back in the day. If you drove in the 70s or 80s, chances are you either ran one yourself or heard that screaming Detroit sound coming from the next lane over. They were light, powerful for their size, and they had that raw, no-nonsense attitude truckers loved. But here's the catch. They were dirty, real dirty. These two-stroke Detroits were pumping out smoke like a factory chimney. By the time the 90s rolled around, the EPA and California's CARB said enough. Emission standards were tightening, and the old Detroits just couldn't keep up. Fleets started moving to four-strokes, and suddenly those legendary engines weren't road legal anymore. They lived on in boats, buses, generators, anywhere the emissions rules weren't as strict. But for highway use in the US, done. Even today, old school drivers still swear nothing sounds like a Detroit 8V92 wound up at full throttle. But nostalgia aside, the government called time on them. Too smoky, too dirty, too old school for modern roads. And that's why the Detroit Diesel Series 71 and 92 were banned from America's highways. Caterpillar C15 Assert slash 3406E. If there's one engine truckers still get misty-eyed about, it's the old Caterpillar big blocks, especially the 3406E and the C15 Assert. These things were torque monsters. Ask any veteran driver and they'll tell you a cat engine under the hood meant you had raw pulling power and reliability that felt bulletproof. But here's the twist. Cat didn't walk away from trucking because their engines were weak. They walked away because of emissions laws. When the EPA rolled out tougher standards in the late 2000s, Caterpillar struggled to adapt their on-highway engines. The assert technology they introduced to stay compliant added complexity, created heat issues, and just wasn't competitive against Cummins and Detroit's cleaner solutions. By 2010, Caterpillar said, we're done they pulled completely out of the on-road engine market. That meant the legendary C15 and 3406E were effectively banned for new highway use. In some states, even running an old one can get tricky because of emissions restrictions. Still, ask around today and you'll hear fleets and owner ops say the same thing. Those pre-emissions cats were some of the best engines ever built. Simple, strong, and with a growl that made you feel unstoppable. So while they're gone from American highways, their legend hasn't faded. The Cat C15 and 3406E were killed not by performance, but by regulations. Cummins ISX. Pre-2007, no DPF. Before emissions gear took over the trucking world, the Cummins ISX was a beast. The pre-2007 versions didn't have a DPF, which meant they ran cooler, simpler, and more reliable than the newer ones weighed down by emissions tech. Truckers love them for their balance, plenty of power, good fuel economy, and not overly complicated to work on. But that simplicity came at a cost. Smoke, lots of it. When the EPA tightened regulations in 2007, 
Trucks without DPF systems were no longer compliant. Suddenly, those older ISX engines were dirty by law, even if they were still running strong. In some states, like California, you can't legally run one on the highway anymore unless it's been retrofitted. Fleets had to make tough choices – upgrade, retrofit, or park the trucks. For a lot of smaller operators, that was the end of the line for their favourite ISX models. Still, drivers look back on those pre-DPF ISXs as the golden age of Cummins. They didn't clog, didn't overheat, and didn't bury you in downtime like some of the newer emissions era engines. So while the pre-2007 ISX was effectively banned off the road in many places, in the minds of truckers, it's still remembered as one of the best engines Cummins ever built. Navistar Max Force 11 13. If there's one engine truckers love to hate, it's the Navistar Max Force. On paper, the Max Force 11 and 13 looked solid, decent horsepower, decent torque, and backed by a big name in American trucking. But out on the road, they were a nightmare. Instead of adopting the SCR system with DEF fluid like everyone else, Navistar tried to push EGR-only technology to meet emissions. That gamble failed big time. Engines overheated, emission systems clogged, and breakdowns became routine. Fleets were losing trucks to the shop faster than they could make money with them. The lawsuits piled up, customers bailed, and Navistar's reputation tanked. By the mid-2000s, the Max Force engines were basically banned by reality. They weren't outlawed by the EPA, they just couldn't survive in the real world. Ask any veteran trucker and you'll hear the same thing. The Max Force wasn't just unreliable, it was catastrophic for businesses. Some fleets lost millions, and many owner-operators swore off Navistar entirely. Today, the Max Force 11 13 stands as one of the most infamous engines in trucking history, a textbook example of how cutting corners on emissions tech can destroy a brand. Detroit Diesel Series 6012.7 liters, pre-EGR slash DPF. The Detroit Diesel Series 6012.7 liters is one of those engines truckers still talk about with respect. Launched in the late 80s, it quickly became a legend for its mix of power, fuel efficiency, and bulletproof reliability. Fleets loved it, owner-operators swore by it, and for good reason. These engines could rack up over a million miles with little more than routine maintenance. But then came emissions laws. The pre-EGR, pre-DPF versions of the Series 60 simply couldn't survive the tightening EPA and CARB regulations of the 2000s. They smoked too much, they didn't meet the new standards, and step by step, they were phased out of legal road use in many states. For drivers, this was a bitter pill to swallow. The original 12.7 liter was simple, mechanical, and easy to work on. No complicated aftertreatment, no fragile sensors just raw diesel power that worked. Once emissions gear was bolted on, the reliability went downhill fast, and the glory days of the Series 60 were over. Today, the pre-emissions 12.7 liters is practically worshipped in the trucking world. Guys still hunt for glider kits or rebuilt engines just to avoid the headaches of modern emission systems. It's a reminder of a time when engines were built to last until regulations forced them off the road. Mac E7, pre-EGR. The Mac E7 wasn't just an engine, it was the heart of Mac trucks for more than two decades. Introduced in the late 1980s, it powered everything from the legendary RD dump trucks to highway CH models. What made it special was its balance. Plenty of pulling power, long-lasting durability, and a design that wasn't overcomplicated. Truckers trusted the E7 because it was easy to work on. You didn't need special diagnostic tools or computers, just a set of wrenches and some experience, and you could keep it running for millions of miles. Mechanics praised its straightforward design, and fleet owners loved it because downtime was rare. In industries like construction, logging, and regional hauling, the E7 became the definition of reliability. But like so many other classic diesel engines, Emissions regulations caught up with it. 
By the early 2000s, the EPA required EGR systems and later DPF and SCR technology. The E7, built in a simpler era, couldn't be adapted without losing what made it great. Mac retired the engine, replacing it with newer models that met emissions but never earned the same respect. Today, you'll still see E7-powered trucks running strong in off-road jobs, quarries, and in countries without strict emissions laws. Ask an old-school Mac driver, and they'll tell you. Nothing built after it has ever matched its raw dependability. The E7 stands as one of the last true workhorse engines, a reminder of when trucks were built to last first and meet regulation second. So there you have it, six American truck engines that were once kings of the road, but ended up banned, discontinued, or pushed aside by regulations. Some of them were too dirty for today's standards, some were overcomplicated disasters, and others were simply victims of time. But if there's one thing these engines prove, it's that trucking isn't just about horsepower or torque, it's about trust. A driver needs to know the engine under the hood will get the job done, mile after mile, without leaving them stranded or bankrupt in the repair shop. The sad truth is, a lot of the engines built today won't be remembered the way these classics are, good or bad. Regulations, corporate decisions, and changing times mean we'll probably never see another era like the one that gave us the Detroit Two Strokes, the Mach E7, or the legendary pre-EGR Series 60. But here's the question for you. Which engine do you think deserved to survive? And which one are you glad got banned? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear your stories. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe because we've got more deep dives into the history, the mistakes, and the legends that shaped trucking in America. Until next time, keep it between the lines and keep rolling strong.